Right, my name is Yusuf Omar and I'm a mobile journalist at CNN based in London. Uh, I wanted to be a correspondent, a foreign correspondent, a journalist my entire life, to go to the war zones, to natural disasters, to travel the world and tell stories. And for the last few years, newsrooms have been shrinking, budgets have been cutting, people have been pulling back on their international coverage. But I found myself in a situation where I could use a mobile phone to tell stories. And I ended up becoming the cheapest, most efficient journalist in the newsroom. And I would give you photos and GIFs and tweets. And I'd write a blog post and I'd do a video for the website. And I'd do 360 and I'd give you so many different things. You are entering a future of journalism uh, where you need to be a Robocop. You need to have so many weapons at your disposal. You need to be able to shoot video here and take photos there. And, uh, write tweets and, and do a whole holistic view of the story. Uh, the days of just being a writer or just being a cameraman are dying very, very quickly. Uh, so you need to acquire lots of skills and I, I think that the most important skill that a journalist can acquire or have today is the ability to have more skills. The ability to see a new technology, to see a new platform and say, oh, I know how to use this to make journalism, uh, to do better stories. Uh, and that's something I've been doing my entire career. And I look at Snapchat, I look at Instagram, I don't look at them as toys or as uh, childish social media apps. I look at the ability to do good journalism on these platforms. Uh, Could you tell about, for example, the way of life in, by a, mo a mojo or a mojo? I think a mojo, a mobile journalist, needs to live this job. It's not like you work nine to five and you finish and you're like, okay, now I don't have to do anything. For me, my phone is, is like a holster, like a gun. It's always available in my pocket so I can pull it out quickly because I never know when a big story is going to happen, when I'm going to see something interesting. And it doesn't stop. The life of a mojo means when you're on holiday, you're filming something interesting. When you are out in the streets and you see an injustice or something unfair, you're filming it and documenting it. It really is a lifestyle choice. Even your glass. <laughs> Even my glasses. I mean, I, I wear these spectacles. There are a uh, camera on my face. I press this button and I record video. Uh, and it's all about storytelling, all about me engaging with the world, capturing all of this and sharing it with people. The reality can be changed uh, with VR technology by Mojo. Yeah, virtual reality and 360 degree video are very, very exciting. They offer the potential for somebody to teleport, to say, hey, I want you to feel what it's like to be here by filming all sides. Uh, I think 360 and virtual reality work well in two instances. They work in situations where the audience can't get access to or places where people don't want to go. I don't want to go to Syria and experience the war zone, but I want to know what it looks like. And then you can teleport me there. It's all about teleporting your audience and taking them from one place to another. Okay, to finish, uh, could you uh, tell about, for example, uh about the future, uh, the career uh, can be survival to monetize by ourselves or in company like your job? I think every job everywhere is moving towards working for oneself. People are increasingly becoming consultants, they're becoming freelancers. We're no longer looking at full-time jobs, we're looking at gigs, at contracts, at doing a particular job. I think people are going to increasingly be looking to your social media platforms as the place to host news. Maybe people will come to your channel and they'll come to your Twitter to find out what's happening because they trust you more than they trust the big organizations. Uh, so it's really important for you to build up credibility on your own platforms. Uh, but I think there's absolutely going to be a space for big organizations. I think the likes of uh, the big broadcasters are still going to exist because where there is so much information online, people are looking for authenticated, verified uh, news and that's where they will often go to uh, the big news corporations whose job it is going to be to fact check and to work out what is real. So there's definitely a real place for editors and for journalists to help make decisions and help us work out throughout all of this noise of social media what are the important voices.